Hello dear ones, Father Peter John coming to you live from All Saints Orthodox Church at a gorgeous sunset and behind our beautiful Onion Dome, uh, Bloomington, Indiana. Christ is in our midst. I want to talk today about a very special person and actually I'm beginning a new series this week. It's called The Fools for Christ and I understand that for some of you, if you've never heard of this before, you think, what on earth does that mean? Uh, you probably th remember the reference of St. Paul to the Corinthians when he says, if any of you uh, thinks he is wise by the measure of the world, let him become a fool in order that he may become truly wise. Well, that's exactly what the fools for Christ did. They uh, feigned foolishness in order that they not, might not receive the praise of men. And so tonight I want to talk about the earliest of the recorded fools for Christ, and uh, that would be St. Isadora, the fool for Christ. She lived in a monastery in the desert uh, in the 4th century with 400 other nuns. And uh, we are told that she was very holy, although none of the nuns knew this. They all thought that she was actually mad, right? So um, it came time, for example, for her to be tonsured a nun, and instead of wearing the normal habit, uh, she showed up wearing a dish towel on her head. And that's not by accident, actually, because she worked in the kitchen. She was the one who scrubbed the pots and pans. And it is said that she liked doing that so that she could be alone. And uh, she could be alone and pray and, and not have the other sisters watch her doing her tasks or seeing her praying, etc. But one of the things that she did that they, they, they thought was, was kind of uh, insane was that rather than eating in the refectory with all of the other nuns, she would actually scrape the grime off the bottom of the pans, that burnt stuff, you know? And then she would eat that, or when she was washing the dishes and the food rose to the top of the water in the, in the, the bin, she would scrape that stuff off the top and she would eat that. And it just grossed everybody out. They thought it was awful. They thought that meant that she must be losing her mind. So then, in addition, she was, they called her the sponge of the monastery because she did all the jobs that nobody else wanted to do. And again, she did it so she could be by herself. She knew that if nobody else wanted to do it, she would be the only one doing it. Um, when at, for example, then after the, the refractory meals, when all the sisters had eaten, she would go and she would be wiping down the tables. And as she did this, she would wipe all of the crumbs from the tables into her hands. And again, that was her meal. That's what she ate. That's how she, she subsisted in the monastery. Well, there were all sorts of things like this, and she lived there for an, quite a number of years. And, uh, and, and so one day, there was this, this saintly old hermit, his name is Saint Peterim, and he lived out in, the, um, in the, the desert as well. And as he was praying one day, this angel came to him and said, why is it that you think that you are such a great monastic? You know, uh, you take pride in your holiness, but there is, a, there is a woman who is holier than you out here in the desert. And she, lived in, and she lives in such and such a monastery, and she wears a crown. And he thought, wow, this is okay, this is somebody I want to meet. So he received the blessing from his abbot, and he went, and he went to this monastery, and he called together all of the sisters of the monastery. He was very well respected. They were very excited to receive a visit from him. And wouldn't you know then that uh, when he called them all together, he looked, and he didn't see a, sis a single sister wearing a crown. So he was confused by this, and he said to some of the nuns, he said, where is the one who wears the crown? And they looked around, and they said, well, everybody is here, except for the, 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 the woman. She's kind of crazy. Uh, and he said, I want to see her. And they said, well, well, we'll call her. And so they called her, Isadora, Isadora, but she didn't come. And so they, uh, so they went and they found her, and this is sad. This is how poorly they treated her. They didn't treat her well there. Um, they didn't know what a fool for Christ even was, right? So they went and they found her and they dragged her. She didn't want to go because she didn't want her holiness to be recognized. And they dragged her in before the feet of this man. And uh, he said to her, he said, bless me, mother. And, uh, and they, the, the sisters who were standing there, they said, she's crazy. And he looked at them and he said, you are crazy. He said, this one wears a crown before Christ. She is holier than all of us and she should be giving us blessings. Well, after this, you know, St. Peterim uh, departed and all of the other sisters in the monastery began treating her very, very well. And so um, they, they, they were kind of praising her, you know, they realized that she was feigning foolishness. She wasn't actually losing her mind, but she was just trying, trying to, to, to be by herself, be prayerful, and not draw holy attention to herself or attention to her holiness, in other words. 
Uh, so, but she couldn't take this. She couldn't take all the sisters speaking well of her. I mean, they didn't, you know, uh, they didn't cri criticize her anymore. They didn't, um, uh, they didn't treat her poorly anymore. And so she finally left the monastery and she went off and she lived somewhere as a hermitess by herself. Nobody ever heard from her again. Um, and this is the life of this first recorded holy fool in history, uh, Saint Isadora the Holy Fool. May she pray unto God for us. Christ is in our midst. He is and ever shall be.